I was working for the city government of Oakland, California at the time. And I was concerned that we had very few politicians and some of the young people were running around saying black power this, black power that. And I'm saying, hey, you, can, well, you guys ain't gonna get any kind of power until you get take some political seats. Political seats. Yeah, city council seats, county supervisorial seats. Oh, them the white man seats. <laughs> See, you better make up your mind to make it some black folks seats if you want to get some power. In 1967, I was at Lincoln University, a historical black university. And someone gave me a copy of Ramparts magazine. If you were awake and concerned about the world and wanted to know more, Ramparts was it. And as I opened the magazine to look at the article, there was a picture of Huey Newton strapped to a hospital gurney with a bullet wound and I decided to leave and drive across the country to become part of the Huey P. Newton Defense Committee, but also to join the Black Panther Party. Because I read that it was an organization created not just to end police brutality, but the upliftment of all, as the term was then, poor and oppressed people in the world. And that was the kind of organization I wanted to be a part of. At the time when I joined the Black Panther Party, Huey Newton was on trial uh, in the city of Oakland. And my job at that time was to make sure that Huey arrived at, at court and left in one piece, you know. So the Central Committee, which is the governing body of the Black Panther Party, they used to say to me, whatever happens to Huey better happen to you first. So something bad happens to him, Huey, you better happen to me first. <laughs> I'm laughing, okay. My work with the Black Panther Party was really an outgrowth of the kind of family activism that I was blessed with. Uh, my mother actually founded the Huey P. Newton Defense Committee, which was an outgrowth of an organization that had been sort of called Honkies for Huey. Uh, my mother did not consider herself a honky, but a legitimately concerned social activist who wanted to write something that was wrong. We were white, effectively, most of us, working in predominantly white communities. But we felt at the time that the kind of example and the kind of programs and the kind of perspective that the Black Panther Party had was right for us uh, as well. It was 1966, I graduated from high school, and the black power movement was in the air, the black is beautiful was in the air, um, James Brown was, song was popular, I'm black and I'm proud, you know, and uh, we would be at home and we would be listening to Malcolm X speaks on the album, you know, and, and, and it felt like contraband. Uh, for us in the black community, especially aware students, it was our 9-11. We tried the Olive Ranch, we tried peace. We will no longer accept them just coming in and killing us. We're going to defend ourselves from now on and also inform our people about their legal rights. So thus was born the concept of the Black Panther Party for self-defense. 